and welcome to the 2019 Honda HRV. Now, after you've been dazzled by all the chrome, which is everywhere around here, 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 here. Let's move on with first the exterior. Now, exterior comes with pretty, pretty bold posture. And in fact, the HRV that I have uh, with me is an EX version, so which is top of the line, which is fully loaded and comes with all the safety features and all the comfort features. And starting off from the outside, quite a compact SUV, but it's it still falls in a, in a crossover and, and, and a small size SUV. So you can see that the, the front is pretty bold and pretty huge and there you have a lot of chrome strippers and also you get quite a similar style to the the hrv and and what the honda has been doing over the years so the headlight cluster is completely led right from the the D drls to your uh, turning signal so all of that is completely led now moving on to the side you get 17 inch alloy wheels design i think i would prefer something different the alloy styling but anyways you get 17 inch weight you get foldable power foldable mirrors also you get keyless opening feature although you have to have the key in your pocket of course and then you can press the button and open the car as you can see at the back as you move around the flowy design it just drops and then there is this nice little curve out here and then there is you come to a slightly unusual but really cool rear door handle now this has been removed from here and put it out here as you can see so that it remains pretty flush the whole body design remains pretty flushed out with the with the entire design and then you have the sunroof option in this which is a panoramic sunroof now as we move on to the back the the design the flowy design still keeps continuing i like the fact that there aren't any edges which is sharp but it's pretty flowy and smooth and all the edges are rounded and as you move on you can see the 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 rear window is pretty big enough and it's also from inside when you sit and see it so there is quite a bit of rear view from behind continuing at the back you get led tail lamps and also the boot is button operated you open it and you get a lot of space inside pretty much if you see i can sit inside and easily be comfortable although i wouldn't advise anyone to do this but again continuing you have a power outlet out here and you also get uh, a small uh, light inside which is a neat feature also the seats are 60 40 collapsible so you can lift them up and they would fall down and you have a lot of space inside pretty much you can sleep as well so in terms of space the car comes with a lot also it's a compact suv it's pretty tiny but still the amount of space that it has it's pretty amazing now step inside and you are greeted with the lush leather seats which is perforated and it comes in this 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 sort of whitish color but i would prefer a beige or something but anyways this is this color looks nice as well but it tends to get a little dirty sometimes because of oh, the the usage and the whole leather the touch keeps continuing out here this is all plastic even your door cards are plastic now the first thing is that the door cards they seem a little too plain you know if they had added something more on the on the side like a strip because there's too much of just plain black door and then there is this uh, the, the the just the the white again leather stitching in the center where you keep your arms this car has only front ac and no rear passenger ac so in the front you get this really sort of unique design if you may say i would take it as a way that you know if you want to just select whichever vents you want the ac to on the passenger side which is the the which which whichever vents you want to use you can just open them up and close the other ones or you can use all three or 
So, there is a lot of calculations when you sit inside and decide which vents you want to operate your AC from. Now, inside the dashboard, things are pretty simple and straightforward. You get an RPM, uh, RPM meter, there's an odometer on my right side and a speedometer in the center, which is big, bold and very clear, which is really cool because I like the design and, and it's pretty straightforward. And then when at night, all you, are, all you have to do is just see the speed and it's right there in the center. It's also got that green sort of halo effect when, when you lift off your throttle. So it shows you that you're saving fuel, which is a neat feature, which was there in other Hondas as well. But this, this one feature is that it doesn't come with uh, uh, a temperature gauge anywhere on, on, on my dashboard uh, dials, which I see, but it's still okay. There are warnings in place. So if there is something th that needs to be warned to you, it will be shown on your screen as well. Now, moving on with the steering wheel, it's got all, all your media controls out here, your cruise control on the right and the, the normal uh, infotainment uh, media control on your left side. The, the, the steering feels a little too thin to my liking because I've, uh, a little chunky would have been easier to get the grip off. Now there is a slight issue and that is that when you operate the, the turn signal or the wipers, so the stick is a tad too small to my liking, you know, when I try to flick it, it is just somewhere, maybe the steering is a little too uh, t on the bigger side and that is why the, the sticks are too short. But uh, an occasional sometimes I just miss the, the the turn signals and then that is a bit annoying uh, after a while now for the aircon uh, there is a touch screen panel now again touch screen i i, I am still happy that the the ac uh, controls are away from the infotainment but it still comes with a touch screen but it's it's highly responsive it's pretty good and it looks really good at night when all the lights lit up and it's quite clear about wh what you want out here and it's pretty straightforward as well then we move on to the center console which has a sort of hole out here cut out where you can the passenger can put something out here along with a charger out here and there is enough of cup space the cup holder space and it comes with a very tiny sort of hand rest storage out here but anyways there is a very cool feature out here now there, there are there are buttons out here which if you if you open the hand rest and now if you press the glass symbol it opens up uh, a space now now there is a floor where 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 you can also push the the floor down and then there is more space in the cup uh, in the in the center cup, cup holder. So whenever you are not using it as a cup holder, you can use it as a normal storage. Also, there is glove box space, which is quite enough. And there are some small spaces on the door cards, which which is slightly small to my liking. It is just too small sometimes because it only fits a small bottle, about half a liter or sometimes even less than that. But otherwise, there are no 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 spaces apart from the bottle holder. Now, this car comes with six-speaker music system, and that's pretty all right, and that's fine. But my main concern is the infotainment screen. Now, if you see the infotainment screen, it's a pretty kind of dull kind of look, and then it just doesn't fit here. It just doesn't belong here. And... They've also removed the 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 knob to turn, uh, to change the volume or to power it or anything. So they have pretty much removed all of that and just replaced it with the screen with the buttons. And then the buttons are sometimes difficult to operate while you're driving. Okay, you get it on the steering wheel, but for the passengers, it's also difficult to change. And the screen also has this weird sort of icons. Uh, when you when you when you check them it's got the pointy look and it's just not giving that feel to the system and again the screen is a bit too mad i would say and it's not even bright so during the the, the daytime when the sun is bright and falling on it you you would you would tend to miss a lot of the visibility areas and that is a bit of a concern otherwise the the the, the thing is the infotainment system is working pretty fine. You also get, when you press the button here, you can press and get 
the USB and an HDMI option out here. I don't know why Honda gives the HDMI option, but you do get that as well. Now moving at the back, you can, you can see there is quite a bit of space to sit around and then there is enough of space for fully grown two people to sit here. The seats are pretty comfortable as they are leather seats. In terms of storage on the on the doors, you can put a small bottle on both the sides. There is also one bottle holder at the center, which is again a small one. And you also get a power outlet, which is 12 volt normal standard power outlet. But at the back, it's pretty, although the, the, the design goes uh, sloping downwards, but then in terms of the roof height, uh, the, the, the space for my head, it's pretty good. Now the car comes with a 1.8 liter single overhead camshaft, HOSC, uh, IV tech engine, which is producing about 140 bhp and 172 newton meters of torque. Now, if you ask me, this engine sometimes feels a little underpowered. Now, especially it has been mated with a CVT. Now, CVT, as I have explained it in the previous videos as well, now, CVT tends to be a little lazy when, 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 when it starts to pick up. And that's what exactly happens. So when you press the throttle first, 2500 RPM, the engine is pretty sluggish. When, when it accelerates. So that is also to do with the fact that the CVT takes its time to just match up with the, with the whole engine RPM. But once it crosses that 2500 band, it just has a pretty powerful acceleration after that. So it, it, it's still a little sort of sluggish when you want to move around at the slower speeds. But once you go about the 2500 mark, it is just very, very nice. Now the engine is quite efficient as well. It, it is delivering me about 11, 11 to 12 kilometers per liter. In fact, with just the city drive and it is delivering me the, the 11 to 12 kilometer uh, average. And it's got a full tank range of about 500 to 550 kilometers, which is not bad. And if you drive it quite efficiently, you can even go further and you can also improve on your efficiency as well. But this is based on my driving style and that's a bit aggressive, I would say. But otherwise, it, it, it delivers quite a healthy mileage and because it's got a tiny engine, so it doesn't sip too much of fuel as well. The throttle response is also lagging a bit, if, if I would say that, you know, when you press the throttle, it takes about half a second to, to just, you know, start working on what it is meant to do. But it takes its time, but once everything is just overcome, so after that, the, the system performs really well. And then, then you get these fa flappy paddle gearbox as well with this one, and I'm pretty sure only a few i don't remember anyone giving flappy pedal gear box but it has flappy pedal gear box and it works pretty well and you get different modes in from your gearbox which is the the drive and the sport mode and when you put it in the sport mode the car actually improves quite a bit in terms of its response but again it's still a it's it's still lacking that initial punch at the start and if if that is improved i think this is this is one of the best engines in the lineup although i would also say that you know that there, there is a bit of noise from the engine because obviously once it tends to go about 3000 4000 rpm it becomes a little too shouty and even the the whole noise noise vibrations and everything needs to be a little more little more quiet because there is quite a bit of noise leak inside the cabin as well and also there is wind whooshing when you are at high speeds so that also is one of the factors when you are driving there is wind noise around the whooshing noise the steering is very pointy and very responsive it's it's an electronic steering by the way and even though it is i can't really realize or, or, or I can't really make out that it's an electronic steering wheel but pretty much uh, 
everything about it is perfect. There is quite a bit of body roll and the, the, the suspensions are on the softer side but they, they are kind of in the mid-range where you get the comfort from inside the car but when you are at a corner going around at uh, around a decent speed but at that point of time you tend to feel the, the, the whole softness to the suspension and as a result of that there is a body roll but although the, ch the chassis is pretty stiffer I would say and that is the reason a lot of the, 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 the bumps are being absorbed quite well and there is a softness to the whole ride quality bear in mind that from inside you can sit and enjoy the ride quite nicely and let's be honest this car starts with about 65,000 and for this price it's, it's a pretty good value for money so you get all four disc brakes in the car. That, so there's an initial travel where the brake pedal is very, very rough. So you know, it goes into stages and there is a heaviness to the, 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 the brake pedal. And that sometimes makes things really confusing because when you're trying to brake, you, you tend to think it is slowing down. But then you need to judge the amount of force every single time because there is some sort of roughness at the start, which is... A few millimeters when you press the throttle but once it goes all the way inside it's pretty smooth but of course there is a slight bit of hardness to the pedal as well bear in mind that it's not an issue with the pedal or anything but it's just that it's the setting that has been done on the car and that is why you may tend to feel it a little more harder although the brakes are pretty good and they just function quite well when you want to stop you get a hill hold feature out here the brake hold feature which which is quite useful during the 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 city drive when you are at the signals i use that a lot you get electronic parking brakes also in terms of safety system the car is loaded with quite a bit of stuff which is abd your an anti-lock braking system you get EBD electronic brake distribution you get EBS which is emergency brake system EBA sorry which is emergency brake assist ESS emergency stop signal now emergency stop signal is when you brake suddenly from from say about 100 to all of a sudden if there's a danger in front of you and you brake quite hard so the car would immediately put the, the <clears throat> parking lights on its own without you having to do anything. And that's a cool feature and quite a neat and a safe feature. So apart from that, the car comes with two airbags in the front, the driver and the passenger side. And also it comes with the curtain airbags on the side as well. Apart from other safety features, it's got uh, other features like the tire pressure monitoring system there is also a hill assist system where it would just help you not roll down the hills now i like the fact that everything is so straightforward and everything is built to last and everything has a simple function where you press a button and everything starts working so to sum it up i think the price at which this car is being being sold it, it, it's it's a pretty good price and straight to the point and you get quite a lot for the price that has been offered to you and in terms because this car doesn't compromise on any other factors it doesn't compromise on the space it's got a lot of it it's got uh, all the safety features it's got quite a punchy engine it's also got quite openness to the entire experience when you sit inside it's got some flashy ac vents as well and if I think you're going to be creating a lot of good memories in this car, I would say, because it's an everyday kind of useful car where you drop your kids, where you can go to your work, where you can go around shopping, and then there is ample of space out here for everything that you need. And I, I think this is what you need from a car, which is, so th this car is basically friendly and helpful is what I would say because it wants to be it wants to help you it wants to be your friend it wants to be a part of your everyday life and i think 
with that, with that I think it, it does its job quite well. I hope this video was enjoyable and useful if you are planning to buy this car. Let me know if you have any doubts about this car or if you have any questions about this car. I will make sure to answer them in the comment section below. And give it a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to share and subscribe for more videos to come. Until we meet next time, bye bye.